Hey everyone, in this video, you're going to learn about all the basic SQL syntax that you need to at least know as a data analyst. In this video, I'll be using the W3School SQL Online Compiler to demonstrate how to use SQL. I'll leave the link in the description below so that you can follow along as well. Let's first start with a quick introduction on this page over here. So here is where we can input the SQL statement and over here are the databases that are already part of this online compiler. So this will make it easier for us to test out the syntax and understand how this different syntax works. So the first thing I want to introduce is, of course, we have to learn how to read the data from the databases. The SQL syntax is very easy to read. It is almost like reading English. So over here, what we have is we see a select star from customers. So what it is saying is that I want to select all from this table customers. So let's run this statement and this will give us the result. We are seeing all the data in this table over here. Very simple, we have learned our first query. We have learned how to read the data from the database. So instead of select star, we can also do things like selecting specific columns. So let's say we want to select customer ID, we want to select customer name, and maybe the city. So we can just list them out and separate them using comma. And let's see the result. Now we only see our data for these three columns. Now that we learned the basic syntax of how to read from the table, let's see where, how we can add condition to reading this table. So say for example, I want to only select customers from a specific country. So I can select from country, maybe equals to say Germany. Okay. It is very common that we use a quotation to represent text over here. So let's run the SQL and there we have, we have all the columns in the data and we only see the data for Germany. Let's also learn how we can use some other where condition. So I want to introduce instead of using equal, we are going to use like. How a like works is that, say for example, I want to look for country that starts with A, alright? and it can end with anything after. So I'm going to use percentage to represent that it can be anything else. So we we'll start with A and then it can be anything else. So let's run the query and see what happens now. So now when we do that, we see, see that, that the country name here starts with A and it continues to add anything else over here. So let's say for example, now we want the A to be at the back and we can start off anything else. So let's run the query and see what we get. So over here, we have a result where we have anything in front and it ends with an A. Okay, so this is what this percentage is doing. Now let's try something else. If we add percentage on both ends, all right, let's see what's the result here. So now what we get is that we are seeing A over here and we have whatever is in front and whatever is behind. So this is what this percentage is doing. We are finding anything that has an A in the middle somewhere. So with single quotation, we can find our text column. So let's say for example, we are looking at things like customer ID. So this can be in numerical format. So say for some reason, we want to find our customer ID that is 1. Okay, so we can do equals 1. And let's run this query. So notice what happened is that I no longer use a single quotation because this is numerical. We do not need to put them into single quotation. They are only used for text. So now we have learned how to add a where condition. The next thing we want to learn is how we can sort the table. So let's say we want to sort them by customer ID. So what we want to do is just to add order by customer ID. All right. Next, let's see how we can sort this table. Again, it's very much like English. It's so easy to understand. So we just want to do order by customer ID. And we run the query. Now you see the table now is sorted by customer ID. So it is in a ascending order. Now we can also define how we want to sort this by. So now it is sorting by ascending order. We can also sort it by descending order. And there we have it sorted by descending order. 
Now we have learned how we can do some basic reading of the data from the database. We also need to know how we can put data into database. So to do that, we are going to use the into syntax. So in this online compiler, I can't show you the example, but over here, we have the syntax here of the select into. So it's really straightforward again. So it's just saying that I'm going to select all into a specific table from whatever table. Now let's learn about aggregation. Let's take another table. Um, let's look at all the details. Mm, okay, let's work with this table. So now let's say from this table, we want to look at the sum of this quantity. So how we can do this is very simple. Just take sum of quantity. And there we have the total sum of quantity. So here we might want to change our column name. So let's learn how we can do that. So it's very simple. We just need to assign it as a new column name. And let's see what happens. And there we have our column name assigned as total quantity. So we don't actually have to use as as well. When you remove it, it's also understandable that we are going to assign this as a new column. And see that the result is the same. Now, with this, we can also do things like, say, average. Let's remove this first. And we get our average quantity. We can also do things like max. And we get the max quantity. We have learned the basic aggregation syntax. We want to take one step further. We want to maybe aggregate it by a certain order. So let's take a look at the order table again. So over here we have A or the ID. So maybe we want to understand what are the quantity by order ID. So what we can do here, again we are going to use our sum aggregation of quantity. And now what we need is the order ID. So we're going to take order ID and place it in front here, add a comma to separate these two columns and what we're going to do here is to add group by order ID. Now let's see our result. So there we have, we have the quantity sum by the order ID. So again, this works with the other aggregation syntax as well. So we have max, we have things like maybe mean. So now let's learn how we can do a if condition. For example, in this case, I might want to identify my order size. Let's take a look at the data again. So maybe for example, I want to say order that is greater than say 50 is considered a large order and anything between 20 and 50 is a medium order and anything below 20 is a small order. So what I'm going to do is I want all of the columns. So I'm going to keep select star and I'm going to add a new column. So I'm going to put comma. Okay, so over here, I'm going to define my if condition. And so here, how we're going to do an if condition is to use case when quantity is more than or equals to 50, then it will be large. And we're going to continue with our other condition, which is when it is less than 50 and quantity is more than or equals to 20, then we're going to have medium. And our last criteria is when quantity is less than 20, then it is small. And we need to put N, and as we have learned previously, how to rename a column as order size. And let's see our result. And so there we have categorized our quantity into a different size. So we have small when it's below 20, when it's between 20 and 50, we have medium. And when it is above 50, we have large. So the next thing we want to learn is this N or OR syntax. So over here, we have used a N syntax, which means that the quantity has to fulfill these two conditions. So now for the demo of this um, N and OR, I'm going to remove this first statement first, and I'm going to change this to N OR. And let's take a look at the result. And 
Here, you see what happened. This is not the result that we want. What we want is that it's between 20 and 50. It should be medium. But this is below 20. But why is it getting a medium? Because it fulfills this condition that it is less than 50. And let's take a look. Here, this is above 50. And it's also still a medium. Why is that the case? Because it fulfills the condition where quantity is more than or equals to 20. So this all condition means that as long as it fulfills this condition or this condition, we will assign it as medium. So this is not what we want in this case and we want to use an N. And I'm going to put back our previous statement here. And the next thing I want to highlight is that SQL will read this in a sequential order. So what this means is that it will read this first condition first. As long as it fulfills this condition, it will then move on to the other condition. So the other condition will not overwrite the previous one. So in this case, we can actually simplify our syntax over here. So over here, first we're going to check whether it is more than or equal to 50 and we will assign large. Okay, so there's no need to specify this again because because anything that is less than of 50 will fall to the next statement. So we can remove this and we just want to check that the quantity is more than or equal to 20, then it is medium. After this is done, we also don't need this because whatever data left will be less than 20. So what we can do is to change this to else instead. Any other condition, it will actually be small. Okay, and now let's take a look at our result. And there, we have our correct result. So anything less than 20, we are getting small. Anything between 20 and 50, we are getting medium. And 50 and above, we are getting large. So the last thing we need to learn is how to join. It's very important that we know how to do this. Oftentimes in a data warehouse, there will be multiple tables. And as a data analyst, you'll need to understand how you can combine all these different tables and pull the relevant data that is required into your report or maybe your BI tool. Now let's learn how we can perform join. So what we're going to try to do here is that we want to join the order details table with the products table. So in this order details table, Table, we can see that there are information on the order and also we, we have, have a product ID and, and this will help us to be able to join with the product table. And now let's take a look at the product table. We can see that in this product table, we also have a product ID. So when performing join, we need to actually first identify what is the key that we can join between two tables. And in this case, we have the product ID. So now let's try to perform our join. So in this order details table, what I want to do is actually keep all this information and I want to join product details. So in this product table, let's say for example, I want to join the name of the product and also maybe the price. And let's take a look at how we can do that. So let's go back to the order details table again. In this case, what we want to do is to simply use the syntax called join. And in this case, we actually want to do a left join. Alright, and now we want to join it with the table called products. And we want to join it on a specific condition which is the product ID key that we have identified. So this is the general syntax of how we can perform a join. And what I would like to do is to actually add an identifier to identify these tables. And in this case, let's say I'm going to label this order detail as table 1 and product as table 2. So with this identifier, now I can use it to reference this key over here. So this on condition, I want to say on table 1, I want to take the product ID and I want to check that this is equals to table 2 product ID. So with this label, we can reference which table we are referring to. And this is how we can refer to the column associated with the table. So the syntax will be the table dot followed by the column. And over here, what we want to do is also to specify, we want to take all from table 1. And in the product table, we will want information on the product name. and also the price. 
Now let's take a look at what is the result of this. And there we have combined our table. So this comes from the order detail table and we are able to join the product name and the price. So let's also rename this price and call it something else. Let's call this price per unit. And now we have our desired table. And here, what I've done is that I am using a left join. So there are three main types of join. We can do a left join, we can do a right join, and we can do an inner join. So what a left join means is that anything that is on the first table here, and I will join it with whatever I can find in the second table. So this will mean that if this product ID exists in table 2, but does not exist in table 1, they will be omitted from the result because I will keep only things in table 1. And when I use a right join, it will mean the opposite. So I will keep everything in table 2 and will check whatever that matches from table 1. And the inner join will mean that you will check both tables and only keep those that has matches in both tables. And the last syntax we are going to learn is the syntax union. With union, what we are doing is that we are combining two tables together. So instead of what we have done in join, where we are combining tables side by side, now we are combining tables top and bottom. So now let's say for example, we want to combine the table customers and suppliers. So first let's take a look at what's in those tables. So in the customer table, we have things like the ID, the name and the location details. And in suppliers, we also have something similar. We have things like ID, name and also location details. So in this example, let's just pick a few columns. We are going to work with say the supplier ID. We are going to take the supplier name and we are going to take country. Okay, and then we are going to union this with the customer table. So it's the same statement over here, but we are going to change this to customer. Okay, so a very important thing to take note is yeah. that when we are unioning two or more tables, these columns has to be same. the same. So the number of columns have to be the same. same. The order of the column have to be the same. same. The data type also have to be the same. So now let's rename these columns. So we want them to be the same name. So we're going to call this SID and we're going to change this to name. And one more thing we want to do is we want to be able to also identify where they come from. What are this ID and what is the name? So we're going to insert a value to identify the type of this ID and name. So here is supplier. So I'm going to assign it a value called supplier. And we are going to call it the column, maybe call it type. And we're going to do the same for the customer. And now let's see our result. And there we have combined both the customer and the supplier table. So okay. we can see that this type here, we have customer, we also have supplier. So we have a customer called Alfred, also have a supplier called Exotic Liquid. And I also want to highlight that there is actually different versions of SQL. There's things like MySQL, there's the Microsoft SQL, there's the Oracle SQL. For all these SQLs, the syntax are generally the same. They don't differ much, but there might be slight variations in it. But the idea of working with a SQL is still the same. Hope you found this useful. Do remember to like, share and subscribe. And see you next time. <music>